filming. It sounds like a sort of alcoholic diary. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're filming in London. Um, uh, Friday, September the 27th, 1974. This must have been the last of the Python series, the one that we did without John Cleese, in which ABC Television bought from the States, uh, cut it up so seriously that we actually uh, sued ABC and won one in the courts here, thanks to your wonderful justice system. <laughs> it is, it is a, a key um, uh, case, uh, which is now used for personal copyright. Anyway, um, filming aboard HMS Belfast, moored by the Tower of London. Uh, I was to go there along, along there at lunchtime, meet them and prepare for quite a long sketch to be filmed on Westminster Bridge in the afternoon. The rain fell heavily and persistently all morning. I arrived at HMS Belfast about 12.45. Oh, the BBC, yes said an obliging petty officer. You know where the bar is, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I found the BBC ensconced incredibly happily in a warm, busy bar amidships. The only o oasis of light and warmth and cheerfulness on board this steel grey hulk. Terry Jones, with an angelic smile, recommended the rum. Ian McNaughton, our director, was as red-faced as I'd ever seen him on this film. Outside, it still poured. The morning shot had been completed, but with much laughter amongst the crew of Belfast, for Graham was dressed as a captain in full drag. <laughs> Better keep Les below decks, another naval banter was apparently heard. Um, uh, on the Belfast, from Belfast and Heavy Drizzle to our rendezvous point in a car park beside County Hall. Um, when we arrived, it was raining heavily again, it was obvious we wouldn't be able to film for a while. However, in the car park there happened to be an enormous marquee with the second international festival of wine in large <laughs> desert outside. So I added four glasses of wine to my rum and lagers. When we eventually started filming at about four o'clock beneath the South Bank Lion, I was in an extremely cheery state and ready for anything. <laughs> the advantages of being dressed as a policeman are that I was able to stop four lanes of traffic on West Bridge by <laughs> Walk across the road, hit Terry dressed as a lady, grab his armchair and walk back across the road with the car still respectful. <laughs> The disadvantages of being dressed as a PC were that as I waited for the queue for action, I'd be approached by Americans asking where they could find a restaurant where they wouldn't need to wear a tie. <laughs> and Harris Motors asking me where the GLC licensing department was. One old lady approached me, stared hard at my false moustache and said, What are you, real or fake? <laughs> Have a guess, I said. She surveyed my loose moustache and pinned up hair for a moment. You're real. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, what is it? oh yes, just a little bit uh, here before we get on to Python in America. This is a um, little bit of uh, about censorship, which crops up quite a lot. And this is when we'd made a modified in the Holy Grail, and we were showing it to the censors in in England, the, the board there, to try and get our our, our, uh, our license to show it. And uh, a half hour call from John Golson, who's our producer. He has had a letter back from the censor. The film cannot be given an A over five-year-olds accompanied unless we cut down two gory moments, lose one shit, the words oral sex, the entire phrase we make castanets of your testicles. <laughs> <laughs> and some of King Arthur's repeated Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was prepared to trade the ship for the oral sex, otherwise we'll settle for an A over 14. It's all too silly. Um, anyway, what, what happened uh, around about 1974, uh, I think it was. 1974, America, we started in America. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Very important person. Uh, and in 1974, having had four years of trying to sell the shows to America, because a lot of Americans in London liked it very much, we, we had no real luck here. Um, Buddha Records put out albums of ours, um, a movie called An Alpha Something Completely Different had come out here, but really it wasn't, um, the, you know, Python seemed to have missed its moment until suddenly by chance a man called Ron de Villiers picked up the shows from Dallas, Dallas PBS, and the shows aired in Dallas first of all, um, they were a terrific hit there, he played them, bought all the shows the BBC had, played them all night long, uh, and gradually, well not gradually, in about three or four months they spread across the states like wildfire and um